Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Before I get started in the six tips and tricks for today's episode, I want to bring your attention to a podcast that I did with Daniel from itswood.com. Uh, and we had a discussion about hand tools versus power tools. It's about a 30 minute podcast, so you're going to want to sit back and relax. Uh, and if you're interested in listening to it, the link is in the description box below and it will be on in the article on Woodwork Web. So anyway, let's get started with today's episode. This first tip is sent in from Brian, and Brian says if you mix vinegar, which I have in here, and water, 50-50, and uh, coat glue, eat both sides of glue, let it sit for 10 minutes, you can actually remove that glue will soften enough that you can take those boards apart. So we're going to take a quick minute, and I'm going to mix up a batch of this. Pretty simple stuff. And we'll, we'll let it sit, and then we'll come back in 10 minutes and see if this actually works. Because I haven't tried this. We're all going to learn this together. Doesn't need to have a real lot of mixing. And, and he just said to put it damp on the side, the back, the front and the back. And I'll do the same on the other side. And you can actually see the glue lumps of glue on that side so this one's a really good test i'm going to put a bit more on that back side make it a little bit water okay now we're just going to let that sit for 10 minutes and we'll come back and see what see if those boards will come apart on us okay now while that glue is softening hopefully uh, let's move on to the next tip this is from alex and alex says that if you have uh, oil-based paints that I think he's referring to oil-based paints he doesn't specifically say but you know how they tend to dry out they form a skin on top what uh, Alex says is if you take a piece of parchment paper now it's important that it's parchment paper uh, because parchment paper doesn't absorb I don't think anyway it doesn't absorb um, water doesn't absorb moisture because you can use it for cooking and what I'm going to do what he says is use the lid draw a circle and then leave it now we're not going to be able to test this in 10 minutes or so um, but you know what in the end it really can't hurt anything because if it prevents the um, liquid the paint or the varnish whatever it is that you're using if it skins up on you what he says is take that and lay that inside lay that just on top and mine's almost full and what this does is it prevents air from getting at your liquid in there in this case it's some paint that I have some black paint and it prevents the air from getting at it so therefore it's going to stop it from drying drying out now here's something interesting so some of these things I don't get a chance to, to show you ahead of time but see when I put that parchment paper in there it just curled right up on me like that so I'm gonna it I'm actually finding that you can actually move it back but it's coated the top of this I was afraid it was going to curl right up but it hasn't done that and it's actually kind of settled down and cured down now we're not going to be able to find an answer for this as I said in the next 10 minutes or so but you know what it can't hurt anything and all you need to do to get rid of this is you could stick your fingers in or a needle nose pliers or something grab that take it out pull it out and with any kind of luck it will prevent a skin from forming on top because it's preventing air from getting at the liquid in there in this case it's uh, an enamel paint so I like this idea and I'm going to try this Alex and uh, hopefully it'll work as good for me as it did for you oh there goes my timer okay well let's have a look and see here if this water and vinegar mixture is actually you know it uh, it does I'm going to zoom in so you can see here look at this glue here you can see how soft it's got that glue now maybe water alone might have done that but I don't I've never seen water alone do that so it, it is softening it I don't know if I would have to wait longer but it doesn't appear like it's going to come a apart easily here 
I'm going to use a little bit more force here if I can. It doesn't seem, and I, you know, I wondered if maybe this wood that I was using was too thick because Brian didn't say anything about how thick the wood is. But you know what? Because I have some hope that this is going to work, I'm going to do another coating of this and let it sit maybe a little bit longer this time and see if I can get that to work. This next tip is from Vaughn, and he's suggesting using chain to make circles or arcs with and what a great idea because chain of course has all sorts of links in it so you can use it for different lengths have a look at this now there's all sorts of ways that you could do this and because you can vary where you start and stop uh, and because I'm often drawing full-size plans for things um, I really like this is a really neat idea I'm going to use a felt pen so you'll be able to see it but you know I could take an arc uh, and I'm actually working on something now that I need a shallow a very shallow arc uh, so I'm going to put that there and move that out there Look at that. Isn't that a great idea? That, I really like that. That's a good tip. Thanks, Vaughn. Here's a tip from Christopher. He says if you have an old spice jar around, it's a perfect place to keep your jigsaw blades. Look at that. And I've even got some that are still in packages, and even they fit in there. I just cut them in half, and everything fits in there, and I know exactly where they are. It's a good, solid case, easy to find. I really like that. Thanks, Christopher. This tip is from Mark, and Mark is saying sometimes when you're making a project, specifically a smaller project, you might have an area somewhere that needs some sanding in just one little area, and you can see here's an area here that could use it. Sometimes it's a change of grain, and he says rather than sanding the entire top, he says you can take a small part of it and just draw get some sandpaper you can cut it you sometimes if it's cloth sandpaper you can rip it and just sand in that one specific area by holding down and you can see the sawdust that I'm bringing up off there and that's a great way of sanding just one specific little area and just giving it enough sanding to do the job rather than having to sand the whole top so that's a really good tip thanks Mark Okay, well, I'm back with part two of uh, using this vinegar and water to see if we can take that, use that to soften that glue enough to take that. Anyway, um, <laughs> maybe everything doesn't work as well with me, but um, I'm not seeing a success on that one, but maybe... You, He'll get back to me and give me some other tips on why that might not be working. So, Brian, let me know. This next tip is from Mark. And I have my circular saw here, or one of them. And what Mark is suggesting is that if you make some little marker blocks, and I've made up two of them, uh, one for the front and one for the back, he said you can actually use them to set up your circular saw. Now let me show you, I want to cut off a board here, let me show you what I'm going to do. So to show you how this works, I've got a little piece of plywood here, some scrap that I just have clamped to my workbench, and I'm just going to make up an arbitrary line, doesn't really matter where it is. Now the next thing I do is take my little measuring blocks, and I can do a couple of things. I can take them and just mark them, each one of them, and I, in that case I would, I would only need one, but in this case I'm going to use both of them because I'm going to use them as little stoppers. And I'll take one there and the other one there, and I'm just going to take a second and clamp them. And those are close enough for what we want to do. And now I'm just going to clamp this piece of wood on. There we go. Now I take that off. Now I've already got that part measured. Now when I take my saw and just follow that board along here, I'm going to get a perfect cut right to that line. That's excellent. 
Thanks, Josh. That's a really good idea. And remember, if you have a tip or idea you'd like to share with the rest of us, send me an email. If I haven't already used it, I'll uh, put it on one of the upcoming videos. That concludes my video for today. I'm Colin Kanat for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.